The Bilderberg Group is a secretive meeting of some of the world's most powerful leaders, CEOs and bankers. They tend to be people you haven't heard of, but when you look at how powerful they are, how well connected they are, and then consider that they effectively meet in secret every year, it's no wonder activists are so concerned with the general lack of media coverage. Have you ever heard of the Bilderberg Group? No. No, no, never. No, I haven't heard of that. I have not. Sounds kind of familiar, but I couldn't tell you what it was. It's thanks to the dedication of many citizen journalists and activists who acquire leaked documents and gather outside and protest every year that we know anything about the conference at all. So thanks to those guys, this is what we know about the Bilderberg. It was founded in the early 1950s by four people, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, Dr. Joseph Reitinger, Dennis Healy and David Rockefeller. Prince Bernard is a royal from the Netherlands. He once received a $1.1 million bribe from Lockheed to ensure that the Lockheed F4-104 would be bought instead of the French-made Mirage 5. It was a very large defense contract. Dr. Joseph writing it was a man known to be incredibly well-connected in the political sphere in the early part of the 20th century. He was a driving force behind the formation of the European movement, which led to the European Union and he was a strong supporter of NATO, the North Atlantic Alliance of Countries which has a military wing. The two other key people in the initial conference held in the Netherlands was Dennis Healy, a former member of the British Parliament and David Rockefeller, a very powerful American banker. There is no official delegate list for the first ever conference in 1954, but the ones built by journalists and bloggers show a list of people who were predominantly politicians with the occasional banker and industrialist. What started out as a private political project is now, as Will Hutton put it, a gathering of the high priests of globalization. Attendees have included Bill Clinton, David Rockefeller, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, Angela Merkel, Rupert Murdoch, Henry Kissinger, influential senators, congressmen and parliamentarians, Pentagon and NATO brass and members of European royalty. The Bilderberg Group are the people who actually sit on the steering committee. And when you add the companies they represent, the steering committee looks like a who's who of international capitalism. The Bilderberg Group send out invitations and every year around 130 people meet. You cannot buy your way in, you have to be invited. Delegates can't bring their wives or girlfriends or husbands. They are specifically asked to not talk to the media about the meeting and their security officials have to stay in another room when the conferences take place. So it's very difficult to actually know what takes place at Bilderberg because the delegates very rarely speak about it and the media don't get anywhere near it. And for the most part, they haven't even heard of it. My name is Luke Rodowski. If I could ask you from journalist to journalist, have you ever heard about the Bilderberg Group? The Bilderberg Group is... Uh, this is something that is, I should know about. That yeah. Uh, then we have the Bilderberg Group that openly said that they chose I have John no Edwards. I no idea what that is. If I could just tell you, it's a meeting of the most influential people in the world. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I 150. have no idea what it is. So it's not. Using previous delegate lists, you can break people out by sector. And by far, the best represented are banks as well as industry, tech, telecom and pharma. It's the most capitalist gathering you could possibly imagine. So it's not too dissimilar to the World Economic Forum. So why are people so concerned with what takes place at Bilderberg? Well, the World Economic Forum is well attended by the media. People know it exists. Whereas the Bilderberg Group have done everything in their power to remain a private and secretive group. Then there's the way that politicians speak about the group. Like this time, Tony Blair was caught out by We Are Change. You denied being a member of the Bilderberg Group. Uh, the Guardian reported that you came there in 1993. What do you say to those people who have questions about the Bilderberg Group? About the Bilderberg Group? Yeah, it's a really useful group, actually. I remember going there back to, to that in 1993, and we... Uh, it's a, it's a great way too from people from different parts of the world to get together. Um, so it's been good. Do you think it's a conflict of interest? I mean, the heads of media, corporations, banking, meeting with yeah. each other without the media even mentioning it? Uh, I don't know. It may have changed a bit since my day. 
Normally when people are confronted about Bilderberg, they're not quite as forthcoming as Tony Blair was. This is what happened when activist Weaving Spider spoke to Canadian politician Mike Harris. Just to my understanding, um, you attended a conference and I'm curious as to your opinions about the organization and that is the Bilderberg Group. Uh, what, what, what sorts of things were discussed when you were there and what do you think of Bilderberg? Well, one of the, one of the rules of Bilderberg is that everything uh, is private and off the record. So that's what I think of it. Okay. Then there was the complete evasion of the question by former New York Governor George Pataki. But can you please tell us what happened at the Bilderberg meeting in Canada, Ottawa, when you met with David Rockefeller since there was no media coverage? Um, I didn't meet with David Rockefeller. We went and toured. David's a friend of mine, and we went and toured the, 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 the Native American Museum. In, in Ottawa, Ottawa, Canada, in 2006. And, and it was just absolutely wonderful, and we but, didn't discuss any. But there's any. video of you at the Bilderberg meeting yeah, was, at the hotel. What happened at the Bilderberg meeting, and why is there no press? There were intelligent discussions, which may be why the press wasn't there. Then there's the security. When it was announced that the Grove Hotel in Hertfordshire was likely to be the host of the next Bilderberg conference, a journalist went down there to check out the grounds. A gentleman is approaching me. Hello. You work for the Ryder Cup? I do indeed. Can you turn it off, please? What's up? What's going on? Um, you tell me. Got any identification on me? Say identification? Who are. Well, who are you? To ask me for identification. Police officer. You're a police officer? Plus, I don't know that you, you said you're a police officer. I don't believe you're a police officer unless you show me the badge. Who is it? Let me see again. So you're working for Hertfordshire Police? It's basically a hovering CCTV camera. And they are having a good look at me. I hope I'm entertaining for them. I don't know. There's the police officer over there. Having a look back. No doubt taking some photographs of me as well, but hey. Who cares? It's this creepy secrecy plus the security which has led to so many theories about what actually takes place at Bilderberg. Everything from the planning of wars to the planning of economic crises, even to a global genocide to reduce the population. Some Bilderbergers have spoken about their experiences, but it is rare and very brief. When Dennis Healy, one of the original founders of Bilderberg, was asked by the journalist John Ronson, he said this, to say we were striving for a one world government is exaggerated, but not wholly unfair. Those of us in Bilderberg felt we couldn't go on forever fighting one another for nothing and killing people and rendering millions homeless. So we felt that a single community throughout the world would be a good thing. Maybe secrecy can't continue to exist in the way it has because more and more people are now attending the Fringe Bilderberg Festival than ever before. And this year, 2013, it's coming to Watford in England and we will be there. We'll be talking to the activists and journalists who followed this story from the beginning and we'll be doing a Truthloader Bilderberg special. So if you're interested in the story, we want to hear your thoughts in a comment and make sure you guys subscribe because we'll be uploading all of the Bilderberg content here. We'll see you guys then.